our director. Uh, we've worked together now for, what, 16 years. Great guy. coming every year because it seems to me we're the only ones that care. They don't care over there. You know, back about eight years ago, Russia released a World War II prisoner of war. When they captured him during the war, they put him in a POW camp and from there he went to an insane asylum because they thought he was crazy. He wasn't crazy, he was Hungarian and they didn't speak his language. So they kept him there almost all of his life. Our government keeps saying they're all dead. February of this year, another POW that was captured in 1945 during the war, he was in uh, Adolf Hitler's Panzer Group, and he was captured in 1945, and he was put in a POW camp and he was there until February of this year. Why? Why are they demanding freedom for these people? I don't care if it's an American citizen, if it's a German, whatever. Let them come home. The war's been over for many years. What are we doing here? What are we proving? Nothing. Because they don't care. You know, the Marines down at Camp Lejeune, their wife, and their children have been drinking tainted water for many, many years. A lot of them are ill, some of them have died, and uh, the government isn't doing much about it. We need pressure on the government for all these issues. You have to write letters to your congressmen and senators. Uh, the burn pits in uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, all the stuff they, they burned uh, in, in the ammunition dumps uh, during the Gulf War. All these veterans were exposed to a lot of these tex toxic chemicals and nobody has done anything to really help them. They're dying. You know, we come here and we talk to our congressmen and senators and sometimes I wonder why in the hell they really took a job. How can you be a congressman and senator, go in and work one or two times when they're elected and come out a millionaire. I don't understand that. They're not getting all that much money a year. It's, it, it's just unbelievable the corruption that's going on in this country. This administration has taken the same steps that Bill Clinton did when he was in office, he got our military down to nothing. We are flying planes by cannibalizing others, keeping other equipment running by cannibalizing it. We always promised, the government promised our military the best possible equipment to fight a war. They put them there. They didn't volunteer for that. Take care of them. Our retired military, they were guaranteed health care after they spent 20, 25, 30, 35 years in the military. And when they retired, they were guaranteed health care. This administration, Rene, got it and is making them pay for it. Hillary Clinton says, if I become president, I'm going to give all the illegals free health care, but the veterans have to pay for it. You know, what a joke. What are we doing here? We need a president that's going to stand up. I'm buying for the people. There, there's been so many issues in the Clinton administration. Both of them. I don't know which one's the best, better liar, Bill or Hillary. <laughs> anyway, keep the faith and let's. Let's vote this year and vote for somebody that's going to really stand behind we the people. This, this, is, this is America. 
Everybody comes to this country because they like the way we live. We're free. We can bash them. We can get together for this. Uh, you know, in other foreign countries, you do something out of line, you'd be put in jail. But we have the freedom we have because of the veterans and the troops that have fought for all our freedom. Vote Donald Trump. Get America strong again. And I don't think Donald Trump will bow down to anybody in any foreign country. They should thank America for what we give to the world, for the world. Thank all of you. God bless all of you. Thank you for coming every year. God bless all our veterans, my brother and sister Vietnam vets. Welcome home to all Iraq and Afghanistan vets. Thank all of you, and God bless the United States of America, the one free country in the world. Chairman of the Board for Rolling Thunder, National Teddy Z. Our major function is to publicize the POW and MIA issue, to educate the public that many American prisoners of war were left behind after past wars, and to help correct the past and to protect future veterans from being left behind should they become prisoners of war missing in action. Second, we are committed to helping disabled veterans from all wars. Rolling Thunder Incorporated is a nonprofit organization. Each and every individual donates his or her time because they believe in the issue at hand. Thank you. Chris, would you escort our next speaker, please, to the podium? Former representative from New York State, John Laboutier, New York, POW expert. Representative, come on up. Gosh, you know, they give me these bios all the time and I I have to, but this is the best one ever from John Laboutier. He leads Skyhook 2, devoted to bringing home live POWs still held in Southeast Asia against their will. And he's co host of Political Insiders on Fox News Channel tonight at 7 30. Representative Laboutier. Thank you, Mike. I'm just going to take a few minutes. It is. Five minutes of two here in Washington, D.C., which means it's five minutes of two Monday morning on the Vietnamese border in a series of prisoner of war camps where there are today around 250 still held against their will. I've been over there many times, including three times last year. If you go there, it's very clear that there are these prisoners being held in these camps. In fact, everybody in the vicinity talks about it all the time. They all know about it. Oh yeah, my uncle drives a truck that delivers vegetables to the camp every Monday. It's well known. But the problem for this issue, two things, betrayal and lies. And they come from where we are standing. From this city is the reason the prisoners have not come home. So let me just tell you very quickly what happened. 40 years ago, when the war was coming to an end, we promised to pay Vietnam 4.75 billion, with a B, dollars. Uh, and that was done by President Nixon to the Vietnamese, and they promised to give back the POWs. And the first shipment of prisoners who came home included John McCain and others. And they sent about half the prisoners. They had 1,200. They sent 600 home. The famous ones, McCain, Jerry Denton, Richard Stratton, J Admiral Stockdale. But they kept 600 back as an insurance policy to get the money. Well, guess what? 40 
three years later, we still have never paid one penny to the Vietnamese. And guess what? They've never given one of those 600 prisoners back. That is terrible. But the worst part are the people in our government, obviously already referred to members of Congress, but it's presidents of the United States of both parties, congressmen, senators, but the real bastards are the bureaucrats in the CIA, the DIA, the NSA, who have lied to the families of these men. There are a few families here today. And uh, Jerry Kiley and I are very good friends with Carol Herdlicka, whose husband was shot down 51 years ago, 1965, in Laos, photographed on the ground in captivity. Two years later, recorded a radio interview on a Moscow radio by the communists. He was alive. He may still very well be alive at 84 years old. What does our government do about these men? Nothing. And they have betrayed them, and they have lied to the families. They've not shown them the truth about the incidents where their sons or husbands or fathers were lost. This is the most disgraceful cover-up in American political history. The media pays no attention to it. Big surprise. Uh, the politicians pay lip service to it. Big surprise. It's the few of us who are left who still care about this thing. So what can you do? A eh, couple things. Number one, it doesn't ever hurt to pray that these men, while they still have a life uh, ahead of them and a breath in their body, could come home and be back in this great country. That would be the first thing. Pray for them. Number two comes this election. Does this election matter for bringing home the POWs that are still there? We have, yes it does, it always does. So the choice, Hillary or Trump? Hillary, Cl Hillary Clinton, Hillary Clinton was the co-president uh, with her husband for eight years, during which time they not only did nothing about the POWs, they took that awful, wretched, corrupt Senate Select Committee report and used it to justify normalizing relations with Vietnam giving away any leverage we ever had. That didn't work. Eight years of Clinton did nothing to bring the prisoners home. And four years of Hillary as Secretary of State did nothing. She didn't do squat to bring the prisoners home. So, thumbs down on Hillary. Uh, now we get, we get to Donald Trump. Now Donald Trump got a little twisted up last summer in his anger about John McCain. And I, I have to speak about John McCain. I've known John McCain for 40 years. There has never been a public official who's been worse on the POW issue than John McCain. Because as a former POW, he has the stature to have put this issue front and center, spoken out, and he could have single-handedly brought these men back. He did just the opposite. He and John Kerry did more to kill this issue than any other elected officials in this country. And last summer, when Donald Trump started running, and he was asked about McCain, and he made a comment uh, against McCain, which was totally justified, he got a little twisted up when he said, my heroes are those who weren't captured. Later, he did say, oh no, the POWs are heroes. But let us be very clear about something. We're here today only for one reason. Not the VA, which is bad, and the waiting times for veterans. Not PTSD, the suicide rate, uh, Agent Orange, all very valuable and important topics. Today, this rolling thunder, as all 29 years of it, have been dedicated to one thing, the living POWs that are still there, that we commune with them to bring, finally bring them home. So we're going to get a new commander-in-chief. And if it's Hillary, the prisoners won't be coming, won't be coming home because of her. If, if, if Donald Trump wins this election, I have an agenda for Donald Trump. Number one, 
Got to acknowledge what we've said. The prisoners are our greatest heroes. They're still there. They're still fighting. Their families are fighting and suffering like crazy over the, the not knowing what happened to their guy. It's the worst of all. Not knowing is worse than knowing he is dead. And this is not right. It's a sin on America. So we got to acknowledge they're the greatest heroes, number one. Number two, what did Donald Trump on The Apprentice say every episode? He's going to have to come in here as president and say you're fired to every one of those bureaucrats in the NSA, the DIA, and we, many of us up here have dealt with these people. We've dealt with them. And they lie right to your face. They lie right to a mother's face, a wife's face, a daughter's face. I want every one of these bastards fired out of this government. And then the final, the final thing, the final part of the agenda is a new team needs to be brought into this government with a mission, one mission. It is not bodies, crash sites, none of that stuff. That's important. But the only thing that we should focus on right away, do whatever it takes, pay the money, make a deal, negotiate. We want all the living prisoners brought home tomorrow. I, I'm going to end by saying I hope that this does come about because of our next president, but I have great hesitation to believe that our government, no matter who runs it, will ever solve this problem. I think the problem's gonna be solved. I think it's gonna come privately. I think that God wants prisoners to come home, not just for their sake, but this country needs to learn a lesson and it needs to be so devastatingly horrible that we end up basically taking the whole government that we're surrounded by here today and throwing it all out. And if that happens, the suffering of 250 men for 45 years might have been worth it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, real quick, we have uh, a very special guest with us. Uh, we have the uh, skipper of the USS Cole, Kirk Lippold. He's here. Say hello. He saved his ship when she got hit. I'm uh, waiting for my relief.